Welcome back to SourceFed Nerd. Before you kids head out to the theaters to see yet another iteration of King Kong, I wanted to talk about the history of this majestic beast. What inspired him? How long has he been around? With all the news about this new Kong going up against Gareth Edwards Godzilla, I wonder what other monsters they might pit these infamous beasts against. Pretty cool. Let's kick it off with Kong's origins. The honor of creating him goes to Miriam C. Cooper, who is obsessed with the gorillas at a very young age. In the 1920s, young adult Cooper started to form the idea of a terror gorilla movie. His dream was to have a film where a larger than life gorilla terrorizes New York City. Cooper even had the final sequence planned out in his head. The famous shot where Kong is knocking planes out of the sky on top of a skyscraper in New York, that was the first shot Cooper knew he had to put in the movie. Now all he had to do was just, you know, plan out the rest of the film. For those of you who don't know, the first Kong film in 1933 was a technological marvel. The special effects and the advancements in stop motion not only changed the film industry, but also terrified audiences everywhere. Just look at all these clips. The amount of work that went into not only bringing the mighty ape to life, but the work that went into merging his footage with the actors is just mind blowing. By the way, doing research for King Kong brought up this footage from the original Ben-Hur. Look at this shot. How the hell did they do that in 1925? I'm sure there's an easy answer that I, I'm too stupid to figure out, but I'm still wowed. Anywho, Cooper's original idea for the film was to actually go to Africa, find a real gorilla, and then pit it against a real Komodo dragon. Yep, Cooper was also obsessed with Komodo dragons. Also the letter K, because Komodo, Kong. That fight doesn't sound like it would have lasted too long in my opinion. My money's on the gorilla winning, but hey, who knows, everyone likes an underdog. This whole idea was scrapped thanks to the Great Depression and the studio not wanting to waste money by sending an entire film crew to another continent, so instead Cooper turned to Willis O'Brien and his stop motion wizardry. Willis made a name for himself in the popular Lost World film adaptation genre. The Lost World genre being the idea of some sort of mysterious island that is home to otherworldly beasts. Willis perfected his stop motion technique in the Lost World movie, and he even borrowed some animation from his failed dino follow-up film, Creation, to use in King Kong. Instead of forcing two animals to crush and maim each other, we made advancements in film and art. And we still got that dragon versus gorilla fight, but now it was a T-Rex versus Kong. Hooray for so many reasons. Now as for King Kong's fictional history, it was established that on Skull Island, there lived a species of gigantic ape, Mega Primatus Kong to be exact. The real fake. Kong is the last of his species and is worshiped by the people on Skull Island. These tribes would offer up sacrifices to Kong to appease him and for his protection from the other giant beasts on the island, but all that changed when a certain blonde actress crossed his path. You all know the story from here. Kong kidnaps Andaro, the film crew rescues her and captures Kong. The crew takes Kong back to New York. Kong escapes in New York. Kong wreaks havoc in New York. Kong recaptures Andaro. Kong climbs the Empire State Building. Kong fights some planes. Kong falls off the Empire State Building and splat. Ta-da, the end. Now the original 1933 film was so wildly successful that our RKO, the studio behind the film, released a sequel that same year. How they turned it around so fast is still astonishing to me, but the poor reception of The Son of Kong probably says something about the quality of the movie. <laughs> Kong went on to star in numerous other properties. He faced off against Godzilla before in King Kong vs. Godzilla in 1962, and then in 1967, Japan took a swing at the character in King Kong Escapes. Here we see Kong take on a bunch of monsters and even himself. Well, actually, a mechanical version of himself. Mechanic Kong. <gasps> they could have come up with a better Robo Kong. Nah. Then Paramount tried to reboot Kong in the 70s with Jessica Lange and Jeff Bridges, which did okay. And then they made a sequel, King Kong Lives, 10 years later, where Kong <gasps> survived the Empire Drop, slipped into a coma, and then wakes up to meet Lady Kong. Aww. Between all of this, Kong had his own animated series, he had books, comics, he made guest appearances in other shows and movies, but it wasn't until Peter Jackson returned Kong to his true glory in the 2005 remake that Kong became top dog again. While that movie is unbelievably long, I am still blown away by it to this day. I love that while Cooper originally tried to anthropomorphize Kong, giving him more human-like features and had him standing on his hind legs for a large portion of his movie, Jackson made him more of a silverback gorilla, meaning his facial features and how he walked and behaved reflected a real animal. Peter Jackson's felt more like a real eighth wonder of the world. Now for Kong Skull Island, while his facial features seem more gorilla-esque, this Kong seems to be walking on his hind legs more than Peter Jackson's. I'm feeling like this is to one, make him seem more intimidating, and two, to make him look like he's a real threat when he's up against Godzilla in the 2020 fight movie. Now as for future movies, if Kong Skull Island and the team-up movie are successful, I wouldn't mind seeing one or two follow-up films where Kong takes on other monsters. While Godzilla has a long list of kaiju foes, I feel like King Kong and him could share just a little bit. Personally, I wouldn't mind seeing Mechanic Kong making a comeback with the same name, then have King Kong conduct electricity like he did in King Kong vs. Godzilla. Yep, that was a thing. I don't know why he could do that, uh, but I'd love it. It makes sense in this movie. I also have this fun idea where King Kong and Godzilla start out their movie where they're at each other's throats, they're about to kill each other until <gasps> the 98 Godzilla shows up. Just kidding, they, they kill him. I don't know, he's not in there, no worries. Actually, Mothra shows up or Space Godzilla. Give him a better name 
and then have Space King Kong show up as well. Two against two. Ooh. You know what, you guys probably have better movie pitches than me. Who would you like to see King Kong fight in a sequel to Skull Island? Are you excited about Skull Island? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. It's gonna be hard to follow Peter Jackson's, but hey, I'll do my best not to compare these two movies. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. If you don't mind, please hit that like button, share this video with your friends, and subscribe. While you're at it, click that notification icon in the YouTube app to stay up to date on all of our videos. I'm Sam Basher, and I'll see you next time. Straight to your living room. Sony decided against allowing erotic films to be recorded on Betamax, and it ultimately ended up spelling doom for their product. He's fantastic. And then Nightwing. Boy, if you don't know about Nightwing, you're about to know a whole lot. Get ready.